several mediums and I began in art school carving marble and from there I became a paper conservator and then I did paper collage and then there was an easy transition to wood assemblages and so I continue to work with wood but not I don't limit myself to that I also use metal uh, mirrors photographs paper still a whole variety well, tapas, which is means small portion. And so I had a whole lot of uh, small frames and lots of little pieces of wood that would fit into them. So I just started putting these all together. And the other part is that I'm more interested now in uh, um, getting the viewer to participate. And so the, it's framed with wires that you can hang it in four directions. Other pieces I've done um, that are larger floor pieces or pedestal size pieces uh, are movable. Uh, the, the, per, the viewer can rock it gently, but yeah, I, I like getting them involved. I'm an inveterate recycler and I like the serendipity of finding things. And um, for example, a broken chair to many people would be a broken chair. But I look at it as pieces, elegant shapes that the chair is really made of. I mean, chairs are really unique that way. And uh, so I reassemble these pieces, paint them, hang them on the wall. And, uh, you know, I just feel that there's potential for this everywhere. Everywhere you look, there are things to be found and done something with. Um, my piece is a gel plate monotype, and I chose the medium because it is a printing process that does not require a press. When the pandemic began, I had been very involved making prints at ZMA's printmaker studio, and I wanted to continue printmaking, but didn't have a press. Gel plates can be made at home uh, or are inexpensive to buy online and available in many sizes, and they're the perfect tool for anyone from a child to a seasoned artist to experiment with. Traditional printmaking inks can be used or oil paints or in my case, acrylics. It's just a very versatile t tool. And as an aside, I just got my own press, but I'm sure I haven't seen the end of my gel plate explorations. Last summer during COVID, I found myself spending many lazy hours walking, observing wild plants growing along the roadside near my home, which resulted in a series of gel plate acrylic monoprints. I consider making art is a process of discovery and looking harder. Now more than ever, it is the possibility of seeing something different and perhaps previously overlooked that interests me in art as well as my daily life. 
I love being inspired by things I found by chance, especially things in nature and experimenting with combinations of color, texture, and form. If I'm lucky, I have something I'm happy with at the end of the process. Art to me personally is just about everything. Since childhood, I've loved everything about art. It's my preferred form of relaxation, expression, and was also my profession for many years as a graphic designer and art director. I love making art and looking at it in museums or galleries. And these days with COVID, it's been actually my salvation. Why did you pick the medium that you work in? Um, I chose a camera basically to take pictures of my two daughters sporting events. And it kind of took off from there. I was doing a series of black and whites um, that I just wanted to experiment in black and white. And I took the picture at the Botanical Gardens over at Mount Hoyle College and just edited it into black and white. What does art mean to you personally? It's self-expression. For me personally with photography, it's capturing moments and sharing those moments with people, trying to tell a story with the picture and evoking emotion. Okay, so well, I, I paint and I take and I do photography. So this is photography, and um, I think the, the the short answer is that it's a very easy way for me to satisfy myself, and to uh, you know with digital cameras, I always have a camera with me, and it's it's a nice way to capture the moment. It's a, it's a nice way for me also to be aware of what's around me and look for you know the um, the beauty wherever it might be. And um, I must admit that with social media, it's also very satisfying to share with others. I think it's an easy medium to, um, to use. You can satisfy yourself quickly. The process of looking at the photos later on on the computer is fairly simple. And then sharing, I think, is, is an extra bonus that I really appreciate. My photo is the photo of the Greco Gates at Smith College uh, right after a snowstorm. So there was an, a, already a beauty there in the snow 
fresh snow and um, a view of the Great Road Gate that is not always pictured. It's a, it's a landmark in Northampton where I live. Uh, but what was really eerie, and I try, I guess it doesn't come up in the photo, but for me was important is that this was the end of um, spring break when all the students had been sent home at Smith. So the, the classes were, were remote and there was nobody on campus. You know, normally you would see all these students playing in snow, taking photos, and then I took a long walk through the, the campus and I saw only one student taking photos and international students were staying on campus. So there's the, an eeriness at that time that, I, that is there for me. I'm not sure it's gonna be there for, for other people. I think it's, it's, um, it's a pretty shot. St. Mary's church is in the background and it adds a religious quote or, or a note to it, which, which is interesting. I think it, it matches the moment quite well. What does art mean to you personally? Well, um, I think it's a way of feeding myself. Something that is inside that I think as I grew older has become more and more important. I need to energize whatever is inside. Could be a, maybe it's a musical instrument and, and, and art in different forms will kind of. And so I need that just, I need to make that vibrate to be, you know, to create some kind of, you know, intense happiness. And, and at the same time, every so often I have to exercise that myself so that I can generate art, um, painting, photography. I really need, uh, you know, and have this curiosity for art. If, if something, and it can be a dance show or it can be a gallery, it's just trying to, um, yeah, get, get some of this in, make, make me happy. And then later on, maybe I can use that or it can energize me to do something uh, artistic. I've always really gravitated towards painting as a medium. Um, I do, you know, illustration, drawing illustration stuff too, but um, there's something I really love about how tactile painting is. I find it to be very therapeutic, just like the actual movements of my hand on canvas or whatever I'm painting on. I recently, um, a few months ago, came into possession of my first palette knife set, which really just kind of changed everything for me in terms of my process and my style that I'm working in. I've recently done a, quite a lot of paintings that depict the moon as the subject, um, which has definitely always been something very inspirational to me. I mean, obviously there's something incredibly powerful about the moon, you know, since it affects all of us so much, you know, we're all made of water and seeing as the moon affects the tides, it definitely also affects our systems as well. I guess I really wanted to kind of capture in a series what it feels like to stand underneath the moon when you're outside at night and just that feeling that power from it. Art really means everything to me. Um, you know, being somebody who's a visual artist, a musician, an actor, a writer, I really kind of feel that all of these things kind of work together for me. Really, I've been doing art in one way or another since I was able to move my hands. Um, my parents recently actually just sent me 
a, a picture of a, something I painted in preschool that they have hung up in their house. Um, and my, both my parents are artists. And when I was really little, my dad and my little sister and I did a whole bunch of these huge paintings together as like a collaborative thing. And I think in a lot of ways that really having that early childhood experience um, definitely encouraged me through my life. My parents have been very supportive of that. Um, and, you know, really at the end of the day, every time I've tried doing something else that's not art related, I find myself to be incredibly unhappy. And this is just the most fulfilling thing I can do with my time and all my, my time on earth. Mostly I work digitally, but I had wanted to get back into printing and a new community print studio opened up in Brattleboro, which is not far from me this year. Um, so they were offering a screen printing workshop and I decided to take that and produce this piece through that process. A lot of my work um, is drawn from old advertisements or older print work from the mid century and just sort of ephemera. And I had produced a small ticket with the admit one logo on it. And it just got me started thinking about all the different things that could follow on admit one and sort of, you know, this age of intolerance that we're in. And so I was trying to work off that idea. For me, art is just a way to really stay in conversation with the world, um, especially if you live a more solitary life, which these days it seems like everyone does. But, um, you know, for me, I live alone with three kids. And so they take a lot of my time. I'm not out in the world as much as I used to be. So it's important for me to still have a, a give and take with the world. And I feel like that's how I can do it. Well, I've always liked working with acrylics. Uh, a real important part of expression for me is um, doing so through color blending. Um, so once uh, COVID hit and I started uh, thinking about doing things differently, uh, which kind of for me meant uh, figuring out a way to express beyond the canvas. Um, so I began using um, a medium uh, of tile adhesive to create a lot of uh, my texture and to affix a lot of the three-dimensional objects to my pieces. Um, and it's been a fun medium. It literally requires me uh, to work hands-on with uh, my canvas and literally reshape um, that material. Uh, I've also kind of uh, begun a fascination with re using repurposed materials um, and what I call found objects. So little objects I come across, you know, uh, in my 
and my treasure trove of things. Uh, this piece has some shells from uh, when I used to gather them living in Florida. Uh, you know, that reminded me of a beach scene. So, um, you know, and I really like recycling material, using anything from a cardboard drink tray to, um, you know, shells and pieces of hay that I've just had hanging around, uh, you know, to make different shapes and create texture. A lot of my art in the beginning when COVID hit, I found was dealing with, uh, you know, a lot of these really intense emotions that have come, uh, you know, to all of us uh, dealing with the pandemic. Um, you know, I'm sure we all literally feel like we have this huge cloud over us. Um, and that for me, uh, you know, I just needed a change from dealing with kind of the macabre and the dark stuff and the heavy things. So I wanted to make a, a happier piece, uh, something that evoked uh, a universal concept of nostalgia. Uh, you know, so what better than a day at the beach? Um, so I wanted to create as much texture as possible uh, while also leaving it pretty general. Uh, you know, I want to invite my audience to use their imagination of what's beyond that uh, line between sea and sky and, and whatever evokes for them that perfect day at the beach. Um, Cause I think right now we all need a little self care. And, and also, you know, I think it speaks to the power of perception, uh, the power of the mind that we have to really reshape our outlook on life and to transform our own experience by literally choosing to see whales instead of clouds. I mean, art is, it's everything to me. It's, it's my purpose. Um, art to me, I, I see it as a, not only a means of, of emotional expression, but as a literal means of communication, um, kind of a way to a language of the soul. Um, I have two media that I love, oil and watercolor. Um, but watercolor is so portable and so quick that I like to travel with a set in my car. So, you know, I used to just take my paints on vacation, but sometimes if I have a moment, I like to stop and paint what I see. And that's what I was doing with the Mount Tom series. I have a few others that I'm working on because I can see it from my house in South Hadley. Uh, as I'm driving by a field, sometimes I just stop. And I just think it's a portable, quick medium that captures a moment. And, you know, it's it's a very touch and go medium and you, you know, you can ruin it in an instant, but it's a lot of fun to just do little one-offs. Lately, I've been doing a series of travel pictures for people who, you know, we can't travel now. So I'm having people send me images from their travels, either vacations or just, out in the world, their favorite moment that will sort of carry them through. And they're commissioning me to do pieces of those. And then I started thinking locally, I, I feel pretty nostalgic about Mount Tom. I wish that it was still open so we could take ski runs after dinner. I wish it would, you know, not that we get enough snow to do that, but I kind of wish we could still access it. And because I see it every day when the snow squall hit um, in early November, I was like, I need to just paint local features and sell those on cards and small images as well as travel photos. I think you just sort of capture um, the beauty of where we live because we're just spending so much time here that just, you know, moments through the seasons, I feel like are really uplifting to look at. My earliest memories are of creating art um, in Montessori preschool. Um, I, I just feel like it's such a part of who I am. It, it's a mirror to what's going on inside, but it's also a window for other people. Um, and I struggled for a long time because I really wanted to do abstract, wild stuff. And I was just so drawn to landscapes and portraits that, that I just finally was like, let's just do that. Let's just stick with what I really want to do. And I find myself looking at uh, landscapes and figuring out how I would mix that color or looking at a skyscape and, and, and analyzing how I would get there and where it would start and where I would finish. And it just, for me, it's just a window and a mirror into a person and out into the world. I do photography because when I was 11 years old, my parents gave me a Polaroid for Christmas and I absolutely fell in love with it. It was a love that stayed with me ever since. The subject of my creation reminded me of a scene from The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. I often go to the Riverwalk in Ludlow to take pictures 
So I tried to beat everyone there one morning right after a snowfall, but there was just one set of footprints on the path and it actually, to me, made it better. That's when it reminded me of that scene in Lantern Waste in that story. What does art mean to you personally? It means two things to me. The first thing is just the uh, opportunity to show things of interest and beauty that are around us that we usually just pass by every day. I have lots of time on my hands right now with retirement, so I can stop and notice things that people just pass by. And the other thing it is to me is an escape, just to forget about anything that I have on my mind, any of the cares of the day, and immerse myself in something that actually energizes me. First of all, I work in lots of different mediums, but this particular one is gouache. And I really love the flexibility of gouache. Uh, it is, uh, it dries very quickly, but it has the vibrancy and the uh, richness of say oil painting, uh, but you can work with it very quickly and get just really lovely results. Most of the work I do is based on Celtic mythology. Uh, my family is uh, originally from Scotland and uh, most of the artwork I do is, as I say, based on uh, mythology of the Celtic peoples. So the painting itself, uh, it's called Ravens and Ravens figure very uh, much into Irish mythology particularly. And um, the woman in the picture has sort of raven dark hair. So it just seemed to be uh, go well together. It actually started out as a sketch and sketchbook and then like many other things uh, I liked it enough to turn it into a painting. Art is uh, means everything to me. Uh, it is my inspiration. It is what I do pretty much all, with all my time. Uh, it's been a very much of a healing force in my life, an inspirational force, and uh, what keeps me going in both good times and bad. because it's a really fun way to reuse materials um, and create a new image from it. So like the title, it is a landscape. Um, I sort of got the idea from it. I had taken a, a trip up to North Adams by myself once a few months ago um, and driving back in the night, I had kind of realized like that the massive shadow to the right of me was really just the mountains. Um, and coming from a city, it's such a different shift. Um, really all within one state, we have so much um, so much different landscape and it's really interesting to consider um, how that shifts and um, how that changes between urban atmospheres and, uh, and more rural atmospheres as well. I really consider myself as an artist, educator, organizer, activist. I really think that all three of those um, interplay in my life. Um, my students inspire my work just as much as um, uh, artwork is infused in my professional life and personal life. Um, I, I really um, enjoy thinking about the aspects of art that can reflect um, or, or the social aspect of human life um, and how, like, for example, my piece in the show is, is not just a landscape, it's a, it's a reflection of my interpretation on it and what I was able to carry away from that moment, like driving next to a mountain. I'm a poet and I also paint watercolors and I paint oil painting as well, which I recently started doing. And a few years ago, I got very interested in working with slate. And uh, 
Slate has been around my family for in, actually in centuries. I'm a Welsh immigrant. And I had relatives that were quarrymen in slate, very slate quarries and slate mines. And my great grandfather was one of those. My grandfather was a slate engraver. He ended up owning a, a quarry and a mine in Wales. So I've been interested in slate as a material for a long time. And a few years ago, I got to go down into a, a mine. Uh, slate mine and it was then that I developed these slate works that I've been doing and sometimes I engrave on slate sometimes I paint on it but mostly what I've been doing is actually inserting um, watercolor paintings landscape inside the slate so that's how the medium uh, sort of was developed for me every summer I go to Wales and I paint and it's usually seascapes skyscapes landscapes and so there was something really wonderful to me to take those landscape paintings and actually embed them inside the slate, kind of to wed them together. So it has everything to do with, with, my, with, with Wales, with what I love, with a desire for a connection with my past and where I come from. So that's really what the subject matter is about. When you think about slate, it's got a lot of layers and it is very forgiving. It has, it's really, really tough. It's underground, it's above ground. All these things that seem emblematic to me of my relationship to Wales and my relationship to being an immigrant as well. So that, that's what it's about. What does art mean to you personally? That's a very difficult question to answer because it means so many things. But one of the things that it means is, is that it allows me to ha experience my life more fully. And that, and in this case, you know, I'm thinking a lot about Wales, about my background, about where I come from, and I'm making art. And so that's an important part of it is having my life more. I, I also think that art also explores mystery. You know, what is this life that we're leaving, this leading this mysterious life that we have? And so I feel as if I'm exploring mystery when I'm working with any, really any medium, any of the mediums that I work with, I would say that's true. Whether it's poetry, whether it's oil painting, you know, whether it's engraving on slate, and I also feel it's a means of communication too. You know, I make this work of art. I'm feeling something when I'm making it. Then it hangs on a wall somewhere. Maybe someone buys it, you know, so, or someone looks at it. And there's a communication between me and whoever, whoever happens to be the audience for it. And, and that's, you know, that's really, really important too. And, I, you know, there's nothing more exciting than making something new. As Sylvia Plath used to say about her poem, she wrote that it makes her a small god. Now I'm not claiming that, but I do feel that making something, there's nothing more exciting than making something new. And it's like play, it's like serious, serious play. Well, in this case, it's um, watercolor and I picked it because it was, um, it's very versatile and portable and convenient especially for doing quick sketches out in the field, which is what I was doing. I actually started using this uh, when I was um, uh, a parent, became a parent and all of a sudden there was no time or large chunks of time. So having some way to keep up with artwork in little pieces of like 15 minutes here or five minutes there became very important. So now I always carry this little Altoids box with watercolors and a water brush and a homemade sketchbook so I can do um, artwork at any opportunistic moment. Uh, probably the main thing was the light. It was a contra jour light, you know, coming from uh, the light was against me. And that created this very, very strong contrast and these interesting glints off of the metal roofs and so on of the farm buildings. And the farm buildings themselves um, were very interesting shapes, kind of a complex, uh, sort of like a string of pearls across the horizon of interesting shapes. And then above and below, there was the on the blustery gray sky and below there was the snowy ground that was kind of picking up the, the uh, colors of the sky. So all in all, it was a very beautiful scene and it was a place that I could reach on my bicycle. So I could just you know, ride out there and park by the side of the road and do that sketch. What does art mean to you personally? Well, the short answer is I kind of have to do it. Like I'll start climbing the walls if I don't do it. 
but I find it endlessly, endlessly fascinating. I've been doing it all my life, um, always learning. It's, it's a lifelong learning kind of a proposition. It's such a nice way to capture moments, like all day long we see things and I carry a camera everywhere and I try to take pictures, but sometimes you can't take a picture and sometimes what you see is not photographable. So if having a way to just capture for your own enjoyment all these little wonderful scenes and uh, pictures that happen during the day. Sometimes I, I'm getting me maybe getting out above myself here, but sometimes it seems like it's um, a way, maybe like sort of a through a glass darkly way of reaching some kind of more authentic truth. I mean, there's something very profound about it. When you see the really great artists, it just can't help but move you, move you. So having that connection with the really great artists, even if I'm just kind of playing around down here on my level, um, that's a very important thing, a very good thing to have in your life. And also having connections with contemporary artists, same way, like, you know, to be, um, have just having dialogues with your peers and, uh, and being able to talk on that level. And in the past, past few years, I've started showing more. So mostly it's something that I do just for myself in my own little world, but to be able to show my stuff in local shows and then have that additional dialogue with other people has also been a really good thing to have going. So I do thank you and people like you for keeping that scene going, even as we're in this pandemic and can't do it the old way. I've always done photography, so I um, it's I don't feel like I had such a choice because uh, as much as um, I could draw a little bit, I didn't I didn't consider myself a painter or a sculptor or um, a fiber artist or anything like that. So I've just been doing photography since high school, um, you know, in terms of uh, working in the dark room and things like that. So that's just what I always loved. We were in um, Berlin gosh, two years ago, and I usually walk around with a few different cameras, and each camera has a different type of film in it, and I really like to try to be aware of which film and which camera I'm using or anything that I come upon that I think is an interesting moment. I knew I had Ektachrome in one of my cameras, and Ektachrome uh, slide film loves reds, and I saw this big red truck uh, with the great bright yellow letters. The truck was open with just these stacks of incredible looking breads. And um, like, I look at that picture and I think Berlin. I have always loved art uh, since I was in elementary school and architecture. I think that now, especially in these times, you know, art is really a diversion and a unifying force, especially, you know, now you can't really go to a museum that easily, but with technology, you know, you can look at art all day long on your computer or your phone and, and explore all, and with everybody being able to post their photos on different photo sharing sites and art sharing sites, you can be exposed to so much more um, now than you used to be. And I think it's really... Um, especially now, I, I just think uh, a, not just a diversion, but a, a hope and a uh, uh, something that just makes you feel better, you know, makes you feel good in these times and to look at beauty um, or, or something interesting that's thought provoking. It keeps the mind working. This particular series of things, I picked the medium because, you know, we were told we couldn't go into our studio. So I wanted to bring something home that I could carry and that I could use here. And so I brought cardboard and, and acrylics and some old drawings and stuff and just started cutting them up and putting them together down in the basement. And uh, actually it's made for a whole new series of stuff. So it was a kind of kismet, you know, it was good. So it was basically convenience. Because before I was doing pretty traditional, just painting on panel, you know, with a rectangular format. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the cardboard was very freeing. Now, of course, I'm trying to learn how to cut well wood, which is not working out so well. But somebody inspired me to just use, like, my pieces that I was cutting badly and just put them together. And that's been great, too. Well, this is sort of like I've always been interested in moments in time. So, and I'm interested in sort of that sort of uh, Western narrative rhythm. So you look from right to left and it's all, it's always, always moments in time. And it's always a story. There's always, it might not be the story like that you can depict with words, 
but it's definitely you're reading it and that's what this piece and a lot of my pieces are about art is my religion like i i have said in the past that oh yes i will bow down in front of the altar of art you know and i just that's like my life Um, I love to work with beads because of the infinite variety in their, what they're made of, glass, wood, metal, beautiful stone, their size, their shapes, their textures. It's just an endless variety to start with the design and then choose the beads that you'd like to use. Or sometimes you see a bead and that takes you on a whole journey of its, it dictates the design to you. This is always a lot of fun and interesting. The necklace really came from the idea of fabric manipulation, which I all also like, and the Japanese idea of omiyage, which is small gifts, and uh, fabric can be made into shapes and designs, and I thought it would be intriguing to try it with beads. Oh, that's so cool. And what does art mean to you personally? Oh, I knew you were going to ask that question and it's so much to think about, but I think art has been one of the constants in my life, even from a child. And now when I have a big batch of beads in front of me, it's just like when I was five and I had a blank piece of paper and a big box of crayons. There is just no end to what you could do and you can just play and get lost in that creative challenge and it's relaxing and it's just wonderful and uh, it's, it's, it means a lot to me and I guess always has since I was very young. I've been a photographer for practically all my life. I mean, I'm in my early 70s. I picked up a camera when I was in high school. Um, when I was a child, my grandfather had a little camera. So I've always been fascinated by photography, especially um, seeing the Look and Life magazines of the uh, 60s and 70s where the beginning of photojournalism came. I got to see how pictures can tell a story. And um, for the past uh, 10, 15 years, I've gotten back into it seriously. I do all kinds of photography. I do fine art photography. I do digital artistic manipulations. Uh, and I do straight photography. Uh, I've covered everything, but I have a specialty in that I love birding. I started birding 10 years ago. I started photographing birds 10 years ago, and it's, it's just turned out to be one of my specialties, bird photography. I was brought up in a very cultured background. My father was an educator, and he was into art, literature, music, you name it. And he, I was an only child, and he saw to it that I got into all of it at a very, very young age. So I can't say photography is more important to me than fine art, or I can't say fine art is more important to me than music, because I have a musical background too. It's like they're all intertwined. The written word, literature, I love to read. The written word, music, and art, it's all like, one is not more than the other. It's like one big thing for me, and it always has been. I've recently begun a watercolor series and I really enjoy the way the watercolors blend and mix in such an unpredictable way. In the past, I've typically worked with acrylic paints as a go-to medium. So this is a great change in a good way and a new adventure in my artwork. I'm a very whimsical artist. I use a lot of bright colors and what I like to refer to as a coloring book style. And most recently, I've started a new series focused on drawing inspiration from and using details focused on the steampunk era. And my four-year-old son really inspired this painting. He loves robots and transformers and asked that I make him a robot tiger with a mane. <laughs> so I've been doing a new steampunk series and he equates this series at, of my artwork as robot animals. And that's really what inspired this one piece. Art is such a form of communication for me and painting and creating is my love language. So if it's a special day for you and I need to bring a gift, you might 
just get some art from me. <laughs> and my art is an expression of the chaos that's exploding in my brain. And when I put it down on paper, it just makes sense. I work in so many different mediums. Uh, I paint, I sculpt, I do mosaics, I do street art. But for small paintings, small pieces, um, I paint oil on panel. I do a lot of traveling and in, especially in Brazil, and there are a lot of horses in Brazil. And I tend to draw them a fair amount. Art is the way to make the world a better place. A lot of my art has been focused on social and political issues, and a lot of work on domestic violence, on trafficking, on the environment. I also travel, I, I teach kids in trouble in orphans in Sri Lanka and street kids in Cambodia and kids in trouble in Brazil. So for me, art is really a way to help make the world a better place, make people's lives more. And, you know, kids in trouble, you can give them some, I can't maybe fix their lives, but if I can give them some joy in terms of doing some art, that that's worth it for me. I've been taking photographs nearly all my life, and, and now I've reached a point at which I can pretty much forget about the technical side of things. Um, it's become second nature. So that leaves me free to look around for interesting combinations of light, shadow, and color, and then ask myself how I can capture that in a photograph. I've always liked to focus on details. Not all my photographs are details, but I've always liked that in the pandemic, However, my world has really shrunk like a lot of people. Um, and I'm actually doing a lot of macro photography. Um, I, not that this is macro photography, but it's, it's a detail um, in nature. And I liked it just not just because it's a thing, a tree fern in this case, but it's also rather abstract and mysterious. And I emphasize that with the shallow depth of field. Um, and also, I really wanted to highlight the beauty of the bear hole reservoir um, and encourage people to support its preservation. And I'm actually going to donate my share of any proceeds um, from this show to the Mass Audubon Purchase Fund. I'm kind of left brain. I tend to be rather rational and logical. So art is really wonderful for me because it gives me a creative outlet. Um, and as I said, I've been doing it um, a long time and I really love that feeling of accomplishment when I'm able to capture something of really the fascinating world that surrounds us. And it's not just nature, it's human beings, it's, you know, everything. Um, and being able to capture that is just a wonderful thing for me. Well, for small work, I love mixed media. This piece, it has a lot of textures in it. And, the, and I like contrast, so the drawing and then the beautiful drawing on the vintage handkerchief is, is a similarity of linear work. And then the plastic, which I'm not fond of plastic, but here it is. They're, I bought them uh, in Japan. They're little objects, pairs that are made of plastic and there's some flowers in the work also. So there's a contrast of linear and hand-done and plastic. So that's, that's really why I, I chose the materials. I started with the drawing, the, the mouth, and I went from there. It's, it's, this piece is pretty intuitive. I have a lot of collections and I also a lot of old work and drawings. So I, I just sort of picked uh, the idea of having this human image enclosed or encased in nature. You know, I'm, an, I'm uh, from New York and I'm born and bred there. And, and then I recently moved here. I've been coming here for 20 years back and forth. And then the virus sort of stopped me from going there. I didn't want to be on the train. I didn't really. So I'm here now and I'm completely surrounded by nature. So, and it's had a big impact on me. A friend and I walk into the deep woods and it's very meditative for, for me. 
I don't have to block out any noise or 12 million people. So that's a, an advantage. So this piece is um, kind of about living here, actually. The, the solitude, I love, love, love the quiet. I, I, I think the quiet actually has a sound. Mm -hmm. And I listen to the quiet and how deep it is and, and uh, big. What does art mean to you personally? It's a communication without being verbal. When I do my work, I'm very much involved with the um, formal issues, color and line and shape and composition. My impetus is to communicate. Sometimes it might be political. The piece that I put into your show is certainly not political. In my first year of art school in New York, I had this teacher. He was my figure drawing teacher. And he said he did etching. He was an illustrator. And uh, one day he brought in his etchings. At that time, we had a very similar aesthetic. I took one look at those etchings and I said, that's got to be the medium for me. And that summer, even before I was to take a class the following September, I talked him into bringing me into this communal shop that we worked in, same place I met me at. And uh, he taught me then, and I've been doing it since then. That was 40 years ago, this July. I really like it because I could never, I was never good with a brush because it's too delicate. Those little bristles between you and the surface. So in etching, I use a, a needle. It's metal on metal. And I feel a lot more comfortable working with something that's a little tougher. I've been very interested uh, in lately in the last few years, especially the last couple of years, I noticed that I'm doing a lot of work of imagery that it, the subject matter is very ordinary things that everybody sees all the time, but nobody ever looks at. And so something, what could be more ordinary than a book of matches? Uh, I call it finding beauty in banality. And one of the things that kicked this off a couple of years ago, I was uh, gallery hopping in Chelsea, in New York. And there was some guy did, did these enormous paintings. One was about six feet tall, and it was a black image on a, on a pale background of a soda can pop top. And um, I thought, yeah, this is, this, is, this is the direction that I could go in. I mean, who looks at a pop top? Who makes it, and who makes a six foot painting of a pop top? This is the only thing I've ever been any good at. And if you're good at something, you tend to do it. And if you do it, you tend to look at, like to look at stuff that other people have done. And that just sort of becomes what your life is about. I use many, many different mediums. I really strongly believe that the medium is actually chosen by the artist to, as a tool to aid them in whatever they express. And um, for me, I don't think it comes the other way around, where the medium dictates to you what you create. It's the other way around. And in a world filled with so many options, I love the classical elements of drawing and painting, but I also love collage, mixed media, three dimension. And in this digital world, we have all sorts of choices. All my work um, centers around inspiration from the natural world. Um, because the issues that um, I really um, am interested in most are um, issues of adaptation and change um, and the transition that happens in order for growth and survival. Um, so I kind of call it my um, ecological art in the sense that there's a cycle. And so of course nature has its own ecology cycle and all the metaphors that I want to express in my work um, can be found in nature. What does art mean to you personally? Oh, just about everything. Um, certainly in times of COVID um, for me and because I'm a teacher as well for the same reasons, it is the best place for me to explore to learn, um, to utilize my curiosity about the world, to work out problems. And in difficult times, there's no place I would rather be. I really believe uh, art of all sorts, music, literature, film, theater, visual art 
are really therapeutic to human beings, even in, if it's just getting lost in the process. So absolutely, it's a place I can always communicate, which is pretty nice to have that tool in times of social distancing. I always wanted to be a sculptor working in ceramics, wood or stone. But being an immigrant, I was forced to move too many times and paint gave me actually the flexibility. I really love peacocks and the colors and the metallic quality of it. And I also love the work of Erte and Tiffany. This design gives me the opportunity to to put on it what I love, the colors of it and the technique, the, the enamel. Art is the way of life for me. Uh, I cannot imagine living without art and having the opportunity to express myself through art. It's inspiration for me, art is everything, and this is a lens through which I am seeing the world around me.